Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. I'm so happy that you stopped in. Uh, subscribe, hit the like button if you wish, and if not, just come to visit. That's fine with me. And uh, I want to again repeat myself uh, to my subscribers. Uh, I hope that everyone had a, and friends, I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving day with their loved ones. Yes. Uh, my kids couldn't make it, as I repeated before, and uh, that's okay because they didn't have the money for gas. And they've got to save every penny that they've got. So, that's okay with me. You know, sad, but it's okay. And uh, so they're planning on coming uh, in the summer around my birthday. Yeah, so I'll be 80 years old, so they're going to come and speed me on my way. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Here we go. <clears throat> this article here, um, I don't know if it's intrigued me or scary. It scared me too. But it's a report and it comes from Congressional Post. And it's Rich Insurance Executive met with CCP to discuss U.S.-China relations. <clears throat> I don't know. How deep exactly does corruption between China and the United States go? A Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs associated quietly met up with a billionaire insurance executive and other politically involved individuals last week to talk about struggling U.S.-China relations, reported the Wall Street Journal. Attending the meeting with CEO of Star Insurance Companies Maurice Greenberg, along with several business leaders and former U.S. government officials who talked about world affairs. Mm, excuse me, I just had some coffee this late at night. It's uh, 1.08 a.m., my time in Iowa. <laughs> uh, who talked about world affairs such as Taiwan, North Korea, and Russia's war with Ukraine. Also present at the talks were reportedly took place on November the 11th and 12th were representatives from the Chinese People's Institute of Foreign Affairs, CPIFA, Chinese People Institute of Foreign Affairs. Chinese government official posted about a meeting with himself and Greenberg in September of 2021. Paid a call with great respect to Mr. Maurice Greenberg, recipient of Friendship Medal for contribution to China's reform and chairman and CEO of CV Star, which has long been in China, he wrote online. Now, I don't know what Z, uh, CV Star, I'm not acquainted with that one. If you are, let me know. I shared with him mooncakes to celebrate China's traditional moon festival, festival for a reunion. <clears throat> Greenberg had been involved with uh, politics for a long time. The insurance executive uh, has donated heavily to the GOP estab establishment, spending $10 million on a super PAC backing the presidential campaign of Jeb Bush in 2016. Other individuals who joined Greenberg in his meeting included former Connecticut Democrat uh, Senator Joe Lieberman, Lieberman and former Obama ambassador to China, Max Baucus, noted the Daily Caller. The two are part of a new group Greenberg created in July that allegedly is attempting to reestablish a constructive bilateral dialogue with China per a WSJ piece of Greenberg. I don't know what WSJ piece of Greenberg means. Many have expressed concern about what relations between American billionaires and the Chinese Communist Party might mean for the national security of the United States. That's the scary part. Beautiful picture of Morris R. Greenberg, honorary, and he must be with his wife. Um, it's a video. And, of course, you know I can't do that yet. I'm not that far advanced. This is the end of my third month. <laughs> they are either demonstrating extreme 
negativity. Night, but it's not spelled like negativity. It's N A I with the double dots on top, the I, V E T, with a slash over the E, or they are fully aware of who, who they are meeting with, commented, commented Peter Schweitzer, author of Red Handed. How American Elites Get Rich Helping China Win, in a statement to the Daily Caller. None of these individuals struck me as naive. Hmm. That's kind of funny, isn't it? Kind of weird to me. Seems like the millionaires and the billionaires and the trillionaires are all coming on top of us. Just pounding us right down through the earth. I don't know. And Carrie Lake confirms she's still exploding post-election options. Well, bless her heart. Although the results of last week's midterm election determined that Arizona Republican gubernatorial uh, candidate Carrie Lake came up short in her bid against uh, Democratic Secretary of State Katie Hobbs. She announced this week that she has no intention of giving up just yet. With the number of votes still uncounted and a narrow divide between the two candidates, it is possible that there will be an automatic recount. Arizona law calls for a recount uh, whenever the difference between candidates is smaller than 0.05%. My goodness, I, I just don't know. I, for one, encourage at Kerry Lake not to concede to many mathematically improbable and in some cases impossible irregularities. <laughs> Fight this to the end. Force Ducey to open an investigation while he still can. Lake has also spoken out intensively about the irregularities and mishaps that plague voters in Maricopa County on Election Day. I'm still in this fight with you, she declared in a statement on Thursday, calling the electoral complications unforgivable and asserting that tens of thousands of Maricopa County voters were disenfranchised, disensified, French-sized. Oh, here comes them words again, people. D-I-S. E-N, franchised, disenfranchised, disenfranchised, okay, <clears throat> as part of, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, as part of her ongoing effort, Lake said that she had already assembled the best and brightest legal team to look into every avenue to correct the many wrongs that have been done this past week. An array of tribulation, errors, and other issues led to long lines and frustrated voters on Election Day, which is when a disappropriated number of Republicans typically cast their ballots. Dis disproportionate number. Okay. In a statement shortly thereafter, Lake's campaign called the process an untransparent joke. Untransparent joke adding she would prioritize election reform upon being sworn in as governor. Lake also cited, shited, C-H-I-D-E-D, shited, election officials for their failure to provide timely results. More than a week later, she had not yet conceded the race and vowed to keep fighting to ensure that every vote cast in the race was counted. I can promise one thing, she said in a recent video. This fight to save our republic has just begun. Well, of course Hobbs was quick to seize in early projections that indicated she was the winner of the race. In this election, Arizonians chose to solve their problems over conspiracy theories. She said in a victory speech earlier this week, we chose sanity over chaos. And we chose unity over division. We chose a better Arizona, and we chose democracy. 
I like those words. Yes, I do. <clears throat> Last month, Lake refused to primitively affirm that she would accept the state's result of the election, explaining, I'm going to win the election, and I'm going to accept the result. <clears throat> I tell you what, I just don't know. And this here, I don't know. Millions of Americans facing rolling blackouts. Now this is scary. Let's see what this one has to say. Parts of the United States are facing potential rolling blackouts this winter. And the Biden administration is responsible, according to Neil Chatterjee, the chairman of the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission under former President Donald Trump. During appearance on Newsmax, Wake Up America on Sunday, Chatterjee said that shortages will occur because the Biden administration wants to skip the transition part of the energy transition to non-fossil fuels. Chatterjee said that shortages will occur because the Biden administration wants to skip the transition part of the energy transition to non-fossil fuels. We need more infrastructure infrastructure in the United States, he said. We need permitting reform. We need to make it easier to build energy infrastructure in this country. <clears throat> Excuse me. Chatterjee went on to say that the U.S. is going through an incredible energy transition, but without actually taking steps to ensure that the process is happening, the shortages will become really dangerous when the power goes out, when it freezes, freezing cold outside. Boy, I should say so. How are we going to stay warm? He then argued that part of the problem is that the government doesn't create anything, but it can and does block things, which is what's happening right now. He's right. He is so right. Chatterjee said, adding, my former colleagues at the Federal Energy Regula Regulatory Commission are making it harder to build natural gas pipelines in this country. Thank you, Biden. <coughs> Excuse me again. Mm. Chatterjee also asserted that the Biden administration making it more difficult to build facilities to export liquefied natural gas, which would assist Ukraine and other U.S. allies. Why is Biden doing this? If somebody can come up with a great idea, an explanation why Biden is doing this, please leave me a comment. Chatterjee also asserted that Biden administration is making it more difficult to build facilities to export liquefied natural gas, which would assist Ukraine and other U.S. allies. He sent a bunch of billions over to Ukraine. He sent our our weaponry, our tanks over there. Now is this telling me he don't want them to stay warm in the winter? Oh, trying to understand this stuff, trying to understand that man's brain could drive you to lose your brain. Am I right? We need to make it easier to build things, he said. You can initiative, initiative new technology for sure. Congress just did that $369 billion in tax incentives for the clean energy transition. But we still have to build stuff. See, and if we don't build transmission lines in this country to get that clean energy into the grid, nine billions might have just been, might as well just been flushed down the toilet. While the Biden administration is busy insensitizing, insensitizing technology that is not yet viable, they are also attacking domestic oil production and at the same time begging foreign countries to help fix the problem that President Joe Biden created. Lordy, lordy, lordy. Instead of unleashing American energy, the Biden administration has done everything in its power 
to push far left and radical green energy policies such as the Green New Deal. As a result of their poor decisions, Americans are paying 45% more for heating oil and 25% more for natural gas. The Biden administration is going after American oil companies and demonizing them, while simultaneously trying to make nice with the Saudis and begging them to increase production because they're trying to satisfy their environmental base, Chatterjee said. The reality of the situation is we do it cleaner and better than anyone else in the world. If we increase domestic energy production, not only would it be good from an economic standpoint, but from a national security standpoint, it's actually better for the environment as well. There's a video there with Biden, Biden sitting at his desk with his hands folded. And he's got millions of Americans facing rolling blackouts. That's the title of the video. Whoopie dong. Ding dong. Mm. I'll be back. Gives you something to think about, don't it? Even though you may not want to. I'll be back.